I've ran a insurance company now for, you know, 13 years, going on 14 years. And I've been in the insurance industry for 20 years. I start off with Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley gave me a salary plus commission. I made the least money with Morgan Stanley Dean Witter because they gave me a salary. So my commission was like this. Mm. Then I went to Trans. <laughs> trans gave me a commission like this with zero salary. I love how he says Trans gave me this. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to cut that. Sure. Somebody's going to cut that. Came over. Trans America. Sure. Cut over. That Trans Trans America. Gonna be Pat, 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 you were just WFG. canceled. Pat canceled. You set me up. There. Oh, you, you made some comments earlier about Kobe, uh, where it, I was like, he was like, he's like Kobe. You know, he would be ice cold. I'm yeah. like, did he just say that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 This trans thing. You have, you, have to have a, you have to have a degree to understand the last joke he just gave, but it, there's <laughs> levels to this. This guy's a, a little too brilliant for. I don't think you need a degree to understand what assuming room temperature means. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead. So, here, go, going back to the question. So, it, it, Transamerica, to be exact. Don't do it again. <laughs> oh, you like that, this, buddy? This is, you like this, that? Is, this is it. Is this what you want me to do right Trans here? Is that what it is? You're too professional. In, in LA, the internet's a horrible in place. In LA, this yeah. would be a, a gang. Just so yeah. you know, in LA, yeah. this is a gang. So, yeah. so, so they pay commission. Then mm -hmm. we go, we start our own company. And same thing. Okay, it's commission based. Here's how it works. Go do your thing. The upside is big. You mm -hmm. can make tens of millions, but at the same time, you got to do the work. You got to go out there and you got to do this. You got to do that. Right. This attracts a certain set of talents where your skill set as an operator has to be being a kink maker. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where a person like a Daily Wire or a Fox, their model isn't necessarily to be a kink maker. They attract kinks, meaning Daily Wire didn't build Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is a king. Yeah. They recruited a king that went and joined Daily Wire, right? Fox News didn't build Beck, didn't build you, didn't build Tucker, didn't build O'Reilly, didn't build a lot of these guys. Now, some may say... Well, they certainly didn't build me. Yeah, I, was, they, I, was, I would say I had great people at Fox, yeah. but I was constantly they were like, you can't say that. I'd be like, what? They'd be like, could you put on a jacket? I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> it just they kept wanting me to change, and it, it just wasn't the right fit. So, I was but, 21. But, that, but that's the point, though. So is your plan... Hmm to kind of whoever comes and joins you and runs with you guys, that you're going to share with them the tricks to the game that worked for you. So it's almost like, and I don't know if you follow basketball or sports or not, uh, where the Golden State Warriors were like, yeah, we're not going to go put a super team together, bring this guy, bring that guy. Let's draft. Let's bring in Steph Curry. Let's bring in Clay. Let's bring in Draymond. Let's build these guys up and boom, let's win four championships. Yeah. Is your plan to recruit more greenies? No. Are you guys also willing to pay the five, ten million dollars to recruit some big names? Well, I would say actually, like for example, with Daily Wire, yeah. or even like the Blaze, yeah. um, Jordan Peterson's an exception. He really is an exception. It was very recent that they brought in someone like him because, yeah, he is a king. He's an unbelievably talented uh, and has an unbelievable audience. I mean, if you go back to Fox News, right, you're going back a while, like Sean Hannity after 9-11. I think he was out of Atlanta. Then he became nationally syndicated. They brought him in. Bill O'Reilly was Inside Edition. Beck, before that, had a huge radio show, and he was on, um, I think it was HLN. So what they would do is bring in people who were kind of that l middle tier, and then they were more of a platform to kind of be a springboard. But what you see with a lot of them is when they leave Fox uh, – their podcasts don't really work that well, right? Because this isn't just sort of a passive viewership. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, there are some some folks. You That's know. hard. L listen, well, it, because you don't have, you don't have people telling you that exactly. this is who you want to watch. Dude. People uh -huh. are tuning into you because you're interested, yeah. not because you have you know a giant yeah. crane cam and a crotch camera yeah. with a see through yeah. desk. <laughs> Did you shave your legs, uh, Stephen? Did you do this? Fix your hair? Do the makeup? Yeah. I just I can, went in the way, way God made. One me. of the things yeah. that the audience is watching this, I was very impressed to see. He came with a makeup girl that did his makeup for 45 minutes before Beautiful. today's podcast. Wow. Yeah. It was very Beautiful. impressive. How, yeah. You know, the hair, somebody was fixing your hair in the back. I'm I know. You thought, you, know. you thought the syringes were for black <laughs> hair. hair. It was just <laughs> botulism. <laughs> so, so going back to that, do, do, I had a couple guys here. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, uh, 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 anyway, some of the guys from Fox News. And they said to me, let me tell you, this is Murdoch, but let me tell you the magic behind Roger Ailes. I said, what's that? He was a kinkmaker. OK, I said, tell me more. He says he knew how to get somebody to poke him here, push him here, challenge him here, show him this, take this angle, think about doing this, think about showing the place. He was a kingmaker, so he knew how to do that. Yeah. Is your game plan to go from being a talent to want to be a kingmaker? That, well, that's a long term. Here's here's the thing. Yeah. Long term. Right. You know what I'm asking? Yeah. You, right? Long term. There's okay. no bench. Like so, I said this uh, a long time ago, where I I would love to retire, and I don't mean necessarily be uh, like less P Diddy, like more Suge Knight, like dangling vanilla ice outside of a balcony, you know. Where if I want to move, death it. row. Yeah. I saw a guy today walking with a death row records like shirt. Yeah, like, I want to say hey death row, but then I I don't really know the city that well. He could be like shut up and you know, shoot me. I have no idea. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you, um, it could no, have happened. If you were in a city LA. called the Liberty, whitest guy who's a no, no, Liberty yeah, City. If he's town. in Liberty City, yes, not okay. here. Yeah. yeah, you're good. Um, so uh, yeah, so I would I I would love to retire and eventually produce content more. But there's re there really can be no next show like mine, you know, Ladder with Crowder, unless there's an environment where it can exist. And if you have to be in an environment where you have to play ball with these, you know, these big tech yeah. effectively, I mean, you could say do a tripopoly, really. You're really talking about three companies. It can't happen. It can't happen. There cannot be a show. I mean, Gerald and I talk about this all the time. I can't imagine what our show would look like if we had to be uh, advertiser friendly, let alone never be suspended on YouTube. Yeah. Like we just decided to forego the money. And by the way, I don't really care so much about the revenue on YouTube. We've talked about this, but once we were demonetized, you know, that was a Vox apocalypse, um, they stopped counting our subscribers. So the number would be about 12 to 15 million subscribers in the main channel. And what we had was for years I was monetized, uh, the channel, and we were gaining between 120 to 250,000 subscribers every single month. I think our lowest month in that period was 80, and our highest might have been close to like 300. Then we were in a month. In a month. Yeah. Every, and every month was over 100-something thousand. The average was 130, something like something that. Like that yeah. Then we were demonetized. Yeah. The Vox had apocalypse because they couldn't remove us because we didn't violate any policies. Yeah. Right. You see Susan Wojcicki, who was talking at the Recode conference, saying, like, sorry, it's not really hate speech, but we'll create a new rule of borderline content. So the second we're demonetized, boom, we were down to 10,000, at most 30,000 mm -hmm. subscribers a month because you can't find us in browse. If you search my name and the title of the video, you'll find something else. Someone screwed up at Google YouTube and accidentally remonetized us. Was it for like four months? Three or four months. Three or yeah. four months. We're like, what? Boom. 130 to 200,000 average per month again. Wow. Demonetized yeah. down to 10 or 30. And here's the reason why is because it's, an, right, it's a finances game. Of course, YouTube wants to migrate people toward advertiser content. Yeah. And then, of course, they want you to play ball and say, by the way, you need to be advertiser friendly. Don't talk about the trans thing. Don't talk about the election. Don't talk about the vaccines. And then when you have conservatives saying, hey, you know what? We want to make sure we keep making this revenue from YouTube. Think about that. When people say, and I used to be a libertarian, you know, until I, I, I grew out of it, and I would still be considered more libertarian than most conservatives. But it's not a free, it, it, it's not about a private company doing what they want when these people enjoy benefits, uh, both, both uh, as far as policy, as far as taxes, from the government, Section 230, right? When they're protected, they use the law when it's convenient, and then they violate the law when it's not convenient. And they use that to engineer the kind of content, not only that you see, but that is on there. So, yeah, we kind of just said, okay, well, we'll decide, like, rather than 12, 15 million, but not being able to discuss anything, yeah. we'll have to build it the hard way. It is a very, very difficult slog. That's what bothered me was the lack of access to new people, right? If you have a storefront that's always boarded up, it's really hard to generate new customers. And it's the same thing. It's hard to generate new viewers. The viewership that we have on the show is almost 100% from people who bookmark it and check it every day. Wow. So the suggestions for you is not that high. I think it was less than 2%. Le suggestions is less than 2%. Browse, search, suggested. They were in single digits, all of them. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Holy sh... They probably suggest people watch something else other than our show. Wow. You, probably but, you. By the way, you, you, know, you know what is... You know what is uh, well, if I got... If I do well, yeah, 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 yeah. that's going to be the yeah, thumbnail. Be your, With that, yeah. I mean, come on, who's not watching? <laughs> <laughs> but, but by the way, so, so going back to that, I bet if, if you were to show the data on what happened with dates... That would be an interesting thing to look at. We could at. probably, hey, could someone watch it. We could probably send them to you right now. Oh, if, if we, you have your guy reach out, we could send you at least the before and after. I the would love to see that data to just show it. If you can, I don't know who in your communication with, if you want to send them a. I think you had an email earlier setting up some of the tech stuff. Those guys might. Gerald, do you have your phone yeah. with you? Yeah, I do. They can, can you, text it to me too if I if I. Okay, if you want to. If you can text it to me, I can get it up on the screen. Fantastic. All right, okay. so we'll see if they so let me, yeah. let, me, let me go to the next question, which is all within the same topic. Um, so. There's a difference when I went from being an employee to a salesperson. It sucked because I had a warm salary. Now I don't. Right. Oh my God, it was so annoying. Okay. Yeah. Then you go from salesperson, you learn how to close. Then you become a sales leader. You're teaching other people how to learn how to sell. Let me tell you, it's very annoying. Yeah. Very annoying. You have to have the pace. How do you not understand? Use this script. If I can do this, and so they couldn't do it. All right. So you got to be patient because it takes a long time. So then I went from being a sales leader to CEO. I sucked as a CEO. So I go in. I'm like, I have to find out what it is. Being, being a business owner is different than a CEO, right? Sure. So for you, do you really, as a, as a talent, like I, I used to sit there and watch a lot of the guys I was in business with who were very, very good. These people I respected. Uh, till today, I respect for what they built. Why did they never go start their own companies? And I would ask them, you're very good. Why didn't you go start your own company, deal with compliance, deal with all that stuff? Why, why don't you just, why don't you stay put? He says, I don't want that life. Yeah. So talent, think about O'Reilly. 
Think about Hannity. Think about Tucker. Think about, uh, you know, I can give you a bunch of these names. Think about on the other side, Cuomo, Tapper, Maddow, Cooper. Think about all of these guys. Why did they never go and say, I'm going to start my own company? Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and then let's go on the podcast side because you may say, well, it's a different reading a teleprompter, you know, and, and today you see their eyes going like this the entire time. Okay. He's reading a teleprompter. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people, this is hard. What you do is very hard to keep people's attention. A hundred thousand people's attention. You did one for 16 hours. I don't know what 16 it was. Hours, yeah. 16 hour life. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So do you really, as a, creative want to go into dealing with talent and telling them and giving them tips on how to build and manage other oh, I'm you not really going to tell them what that? to do that's you... the thing I'm not going to tell them and, and here's the thing that's different yeah it is different uh well that's also why he's CEO yeah well, because, now it's been a company I've been running a company for a very long time you have know, 20 something employees that, yeah. that's why I've, I've owned Lotto's craft are you co CEO is it going to be co CEO model like like uh, Ben Shapiro and Jeremy where Ben is the talent and Jeremy's more like the day to day CEO I don't know what their inner workings are well, based on what I've heard, I don't either, by the way. What, just so you know, a lot of people— They had money, guys. You know, we don't have that. That's the difference is we right. don't have—like, we. Yeah. that's one thing, too. We've never taken a dime of seed money. We've always made it back literally within the first quarter. Explain why that's important. The fact that—what is the difference if they do? Because some people may say, well, you know, I know you're saying this, Stephen, but the fact that Ben and uh, Jeremy and those guys have money from those oil guys that I think it's like the— Fracking, the, or yeah. Fracking guys that got the $3.5 billion, and they're funding it, and here's $50 yeah. million, $100 million, $300 million, whatever they're doing, so they can go get the bigger guys, right? Yeah. What's wrong with that? What is uh, no? There's nothing. There's nothing yeah. wrong with. Well, I should say this: we do have technically seed money. It's you. It's Mug Club. Right. We're, we're not yeah. funded by a foreign caliphate like the Young Turks, you know, in some way. And I'm yeah. <laughs> partially joking. Yeah. Uh, we don't have you know oil baron money. We have uh, people. That's it. We don't have a lot of sponsors either. And by the way, 100% of the sponsors wanted to come because we always make sure that they get more value than they pay for. You know, in this, in, you know this in this industry, right? There's a lot of paying for views and downloads yep. that don't really happen. Yep. So for us, we we go to them, and the co- way we've con- uh, structured contracts is, okay, if you don't, you know, if you if you don't like what we do, because we don't do live reads, we do these really weird commercials sometimes that get a little get a little off the off the beam. We say, if you don't like it, just don't just don't pay for it. And then like we we don't need to do this. We think you're gonna like it. 100% of the time they do. But you have to coach those people creatively, right? It used to be, for example, Gerald remembers this. I was, I would be yelling on the phone with billionaires. I'd be like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Where I had people come in when I had, hit, I think, half a million subscribers. They said, you know, free is the enemy of premium. Because at that point, we had built a lot of subscribers. I said, well, you don't understand. It's free. It's an advertising venue. It reaches people. And rather than tricking people into paying, you provide value added. And people will pay because they want to support right, you. Right. Sometimes people go, well, hold on a second. I'm paying. And um, basically, the show is out there for free. And all of these sponsors are on here, whether it's 4, 5, 10. You know, and, and they go, usually, it used to be at one point in time, we would pay so it would be ad free. They go, what am I paying for? We've always tried to make it really, really clear and provide value added. Now, as far as... Um, with content, with talent, um, I'm not going to tell them what to do at all. Like they, they, yeah. they can do what they want because these are people who I believe provide value added. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, then they can go on their merry way and take their subscribers with them. Like there's, there's no exclusivity. It's completely unique in this industry. Like there's nobody out there in the, the conservative space that is doing something like that. And essentially. Yeah. We just kind of got thrown into this a little bit, looking at all the contracts, going, gosh, is everybody really doing stuff like this that just really doesn't value the creator, doesn't value the audience the way that we think you should? And then saying, we can probably do something better. And really, the better is just giving people the opportunity to be creators, the opportunity he was never given in some of those previous roles. Like, hey, we want you to fit this mold right. for us. We want you to do it this way. I'm telling creators, like, look, you've already started to kind of have some success. That's great. That's fantastic. Why don't you come and add more value to our viewers and bring your viewers with you? Add more value to them as well. Yeah. Right. So that it's just a different model where we don't have to. And go back to your question on the money. If it's your money versus somebody else's money, that's different, right? You, you put a, a different work ethic behind every dollar that you have that is on the line no versus somebody, else, somebody yeah. else's. It doesn't mean you don't value it, but yeah. also there's different interest in it. They're going to be able to dictate a little bit more what happens if you have other people's money. Yep. I have investors in my other business. I have a wine business. And, of course, those guys want to see a return. And if things aren't going the way that they should go and maybe yeah. I've made all the calls, they're going to say, hey, you need to make different calls or we need a different you in that role. Plus, they're the calls. usually drunk. Well, that's why I chose wine business. <laughs> it's hard to be mad in the wine business. Yeah. 
Everyone's very happy. No, but that's also why Gerald, you know, when we were looking at this, I was because for the longest time, right, I'd get to this point, well, you know, with like contracts, we have a certain period you're allowed to renegotiate. And often contracts are framed, but that's a very short period of time. Yeah. And then I'd be under the gun, where I still have always owned everything, but I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't really something that I want to do, uh, or I don't want to do it this way, where Gerald said, hey, look, what if you were to do this? And suggested something similar to what we're doing. And I turned to him and I said, Gerald, you know I can't do that. And he said, unless I go full time. Because he knows that I can't manage the sales and also do a show every day, which, you know, for every hour people see, it's four hours of prep just from me. I mean, we have to be right on the research. We make all of our research publicly available, every single reference. It's like a bibliography, uh, and we post it every single day. Yeah. And then we also, you know, we have to do these sketches. We have to, you know, we have punch We have photoshops. We have guests. We, it's, it's, very, it's more of a television show than a radio show mm -hmm, online. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of the only one um, in that vein, and uh, that takes a lot of work. And one thing I will say is you said that you weren't – a good, did you say not a good CEO or not a good sales trainer? I, I was not in 2014. Okay. In 2013, I was not a good CEO yet. So here's the thing. I'm the one thing I will say, the only thing that I'm really decent with in business is, you know, the old Wayne Gretzky quote, he was mentioning basketball, the Canadian in me, I'm like, let's go to hockey. No one knows. Um, <laughs> you is, miss 100%. Uh, 100%. No, 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 not that yeah. one where he said, don't go where the puck is, go where the puck's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've always been pretty good at understanding where the puck is going to be. Beyond that, I have always had a problem and a struggle with, uh, managing people who aren't like me. And you're probably this way, right, as a self-starter. Sometimes, like the people I've just, we've worked with for forever, like the retention rate is insane with some of these people, are people who you go, hey, I need to get this done, they go, great, and they find a way to do it. I'm results-oriented. There are some people who need to be managed more. And then they'll get upset if they feel like they're being micromanaged. The people who I've worked with really well are people who are self -starter. I don't necessarily know how to manage people who aren't similar to me. I'm a creative type. Gerald's good at that. Uh, and that's where we're at the point now. He's been working part time. He's been on the show. We were just talking about how because he has a great radio voice. He used to I come on it. and talk about I theology and uh, uh, Christian apologetics. And then he would be in that second chair. Uh, and and he's always run a business. And we've always wanted to make sure that we could maintain a friendship. But then it got to a point where it's undeniable where he would see me kind of getting just buried. Like I just don't have oh, time no to way. do all of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way to do it. And I think you kind of alluded to it. We a lot of people think, oh guys, you guys have been off for what ten weeks or something like that. Yeah, right now, it? we've been shooting like, nonstop. Oh, gosh. It seems shooting like crazy, writing like all these different ideas. Like all of that takes an incredible amount of time, and to run a business on top of that, and to kind of handle. I mean, the fires that you have to put out in this industry, especially when you have a target on your back like he does, it's it's just, it drains you. And so we had to build some infrastructure up with personnel and just making sure we had people in the right places, made some new hires, got the team expanded. Because creators not only want a good contract, right? They want to keep their subscribers. They want to know who they are. Like, God forbid, you have to, you get to know who the people that are paying you money are when you work for some of these people. They wanted to have the ability to not have to deal with all the back end, like editing and all the other promotional stuff. And people saying, can you just help me with monetization? Like, I, I know how to create good content, but I don't know all of these different things. It's kind of like yeah. dentists. Mm -hmm. You can go get a loan from a bank right now being a dentist fresh out of dental school. They'll give you money left and right. And then everybody, the financial services people are right behind the dentist when they go in because they know they know their craft. They don't know how to run a business, right, and make money. That's what a lot of these creators are doing. They know how to do right. it. But they just don't know how to run the you're, business. You're right. By the way, dentists don't. Die. You know, a lot of when I they're notorious for it. I knew a girl. She had just graduated. Yeah. She had just gotten. I was. She was like, "You're never going to get a loan." And she goes, "Oh yeah, the bank was ready to give me like 150 thousand. <laughs> what? I'm trying yeah. to start my business, yeah. and I'm like, I've got a model that's First proven all, over seven yeah. years. Most doctors <laughs> have no clue what to do Not with their money. They're clueless yeah. with money. You go to the house. They're making 600 grand. You think they have everything on? No, nothing. Nothing. They, and the reason is because everybody thinks they know it all because their name is what? Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> so the challenge is yeah. you're a great content creator, but it's different managing, con managing talent. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.